Hi, Dr. Dave here to go through everything you need to know about pool terminology and how to play the game. I will be going through everything quickly without too much detail, but lots of useful links are available in the video description. There, you can find more videos, instructional articles, and other resources that cover every topic in great detail, with lots of examples. Pool, or pocket billiards, is a game played on a table with a cue, cue ball, and object balls. The table, which consists of a bed of slate covered in special cloth, comes in several standard sizes. This is a regulation 9-foot table, which is the approximate length. Home tables are often 8-foot. And coin-operated bar boxes are even shorter at 7 feet. The playing area is bordered by cushions supported by rails. The short rails, or end rails, are also called the head rail and the foot rail, and the long rails are also called the side rails. The diamond markings locate features on the table and are useful when aiming kick and bank shots, as we will see later. The imaginary line through the upper middle diamonds is called the head string, and the area above that is called the kitchen. There is usually a marker at the center of the foot string called the foot spot. There are six pockets, the corner pockets and the side pockets. The goal of pool is to sink object balls in the pockets with different types of shots. A cue, or cue stick, can be a single solid piece, or it can have a joint with two shorter pieces, making it easier to store and transport the cue. The cue tip, usually leather, is attached to the ferrule, usually white plastic, on the end of the shaft, usually maple or carbon fiber. The other end of the cue is called the butt. Abrasive chalk is used to increase friction between the tip and cue ball, especially when the ball is hit off-center. Tall people like me sometimes add a joint extension to make the cue longer. And when you need to reach far, a temporary butt extension can also be added. Sometimes additional cues are used during play. A break cue is sturdier and has a harder phenolic tip that provides a more efficient hit. A jump cue is shorter and lighter, also with a phenolic tip, to help execute legal jump shots. A jump cue can often be broken down into a shaft and one or two butt pieces that allow the length to be changed for different types of jumps. A game or match often begins with a lag shot, where two players see who can hit the ball off the end cushion, ending up as close as possible to the head cushion. That was a good lag shot. If the table isn't perfectly level, sometimes the cue ball does not roll straight. This is called table roll-off. The cue ball often has red dots or other markings that make it easy to visualize the spin on the ball. Here, I imparted bottom right spin to pull the cue ball back and change the rebound angle off the cushion. The first shot of a game is called the break. Before the break, the object balls are racked on the foot spot. You can use a traditional racking triangle or rack or a racking template for this purpose. You want to strive for a tight rack ideally with no gaps between any of the balls. A racking template, a thin piece of plastic or tough paper with holes, helps ensure a tight rack. The template stays under the balls during the break, but is usually removed after the break. When playing the most common game of 8-ball, all 15 object balls are racked with the 8 in the center and with a solid, balls 1 through 7, and a stripe, balls 9 through 15, on opposite corners. When playing 9-ball, the balls are racked in a diamond shape with the 1 in the front and the 9 in the middle. When playing 10-ball, the balls are racked with the 1 in front and the 10 in the center. The goal of 8-ball is to pocket all of the stripes or all of the solids and then the 8. Here's an example 8-ball break. If you pocket one or more object balls on the break, you get to continue shooting. Under standard rules, the table is open after the break, meaning you can shoot at either solids or stripes, pocketing them in any order. Here's an example, 9-ball break. 9-ball is a rotation game, meaning you always hit the lowest numbered ball first. Here's an example, run out, which is also called a break and run if you don't miss starting with the break. To be able to run out effectively, you need to be able to control the cue ball and play position so each shot is not that difficult. Notice that I hit the cue ball in different places to create spin on the ball to help make it go where I want. When a shot is difficult to reach, you can use a mechanical bridge to help. The markers on my table are called Little White Donuts. The official name is Self-Adhesive Hole Reinforcement Labels. 
You can order these online or buy them at any office supply store. They help you place balls during drills where you practice certain skills. It also helps to tap down on a ball to make a small mark and indentation in the cloth. Notice how easily the ball can be placed and settles. Now let's cover some fundamentals. The stance is how you place your feet and body. Many variations are acceptable as long as you are balanced and stable. You don't want your weight too far forward, and you don't want your feet too close together. You also don't want your feet in line with your cue because that is not very stable. The stance can be more open, like this, or more closed, like this. The main purpose for the stance is to get the head in the right place and to allow for consistent and accurate cue motion during a shot. The cue should be kept as level as possible with the forearm perpendicular to the cue when the tip is close to the cue ball. You don't want to elevate the back of the cue like this unless it is necessary to clear a ball or to perform advanced shots we will see later. The grip should be relaxed during the stroke. The bridge can be open, which is recommended, or closed. The bridge length can be shorter or longer as needed, but it should generally be 6 to 12 inches. The recommended type of stroke is called a pendulum stroke, where the shoulder and elbow remain still. An alternative piston stroke, where the cue moves in a straight line, requires coordinated shoulder and up and down elbow motion. A common stroke variation is called a J-stroke, where the backstroke and forward stroke into the cue ball are pendulum style to help ensure tip contact point accuracy, and the follow-through is more piston style with the elbow dropping. The grip hand trajectory is shaped like a flattened horizontal letter J. One of the most challenging aspects of pool is accurate aiming. To pocket the 11 in the side, the cue ball must be driven to what is called the ghost ball position. In this position, a line through the centers of the cue ball and object ball heads straight to the pocket. The required contact point on the object ball is along the line of centers. When aiming a shot, it can help to visualize the line to the pocket, the required contact point on the object ball, and the required shot line to the necessary ghost ball position. It helps to have a consistent and purposeful pre-shot routine, the sequence of steps you follow to plan, aim, and execute a shot. One of the most important steps is to aim while standing where you can more clearly see the angle of the shot. The angle of a shot is called the cut angle. Neglecting throw, which we will cover briefly later, the required ghost ball position is the same regardless of the cut angle. When a shot is straight or nearly straight, we say you need to hit the ball full. Here, the center of the cue ball must be aimed at the center of the object ball to pocket the ball. At this cut angle, which is called a three-quarter ball hit, since the cue ball must eclipse three-quarters of the object ball to pocket the ball, the center of the cue ball must be aimed between the contact point and edge of the object ball. This is a half ball hit, where the aim goes exactly through the edge of the ball. This is sometimes called a center to edge alignment. This is a one-quarter ball hit, where the aim is well outside the edge of the ball. A shot like this, where the cue ball hits only a small portion of the object ball, is called a thin hit or thin cut. When an object ball is very close to a pocket, it is called a pocket hanger, and a wide range of aims will pocket the ball. This comes in handy when playing position for the next shot. Here, I can cheat the pocket to my right and get shape on the 8 next. Here, I'm cheating to the left. Here, I'm using cheat and side spin to get shape. And here, I'm cheating the pocket with power and spin to go around the table for shape. As we have seen, very important skills in pool are cue ball control and position play, making the cue ball go where you want for the next shot. One of the most basic and useful shots is a stop shot. This is where the shot is straight and you want the cue ball to stop in place. A draw shot is where you impart bottom spin to pull the cue ball back after hitting the object ball. And a follow shot is where you impart top spin to have the cue ball continue forward after the hit. If you use stop shot action with a cut shot, it is called a stun shot because the cue ball is sliding without top or bottom spin when it hits the object ball. With a stun shot, or stop shot at an angle, the cue ball heads perpendicular to the object ball along what is called the tangent line, or stun line. This is called the 90 degree rule. 
Here, I am using Stun for a breakout shot, where, in addition to pocketing the 11, I am freeing up the 9 and 13 so they can be pocketed later. Over a wide range of cut angles between a quarter ball and three quarter ball hit, a follow shot sends the cue ball along the natural angle direction, at an angle very close to 30 degrees. This is called the 30 degree rule, and you can use a peace sign to help visualize the angle. With a breakout shot like this, the 13 is called an insurance ball, since regardless of where the cue ball 9 and 15 go after the hit, I am still likely to have a follow on shot. Here, I need a draw shot to get shape on the 8 for the win. This is called getting short side shape, since I'm getting position on the side of the 8 that has the least room. Now let's cover some pool rules basics. For a shot to be legal, you must hit one of your balls first. Here, I am shooting stripes, and I hit the 2 first, so this shot is a foul. It is also a foul if nothing is pocketed or nothing contacts a cushion after the cue ball hits the object ball. After any foul, your opponent gets ball in hand, meaning they can place the cue ball anywhere they want on the entire table. Here, my foul enables my opponent to easily win the game. It is also a foul to pocket the cue ball, which is called a scratch. Ball in hand is a severe penalty, so fouls can often cause you to lose games, especially against a good player. It is also a foul to double hit the cue ball. Can you tell the cue ball was hit twice? Even in slow motion, it can be difficult to see. Lots of information and demonstrations dealing with how to detect and avoid double hits can be found at the link in the video description. You are also not allowed to push the cue ball like this. Did you notice how I first touched the tip to the cue ball and then pushed? This is a foul. A miscue, where you try to hit the cue ball too far from center and the tip slips, is not a foul unless it is used intentionally. Here's an example. It is a foul to miscue or scoop under the cue ball like this to cause it to jump over an obstacle. With a legal jump shot, you must drive the cue ball into the table without a miscue causing it to bounce off the slate. A carom or a billiard shot is where you deflect the cue ball off one object ball to pocket another. A kiss shot is where you deflect an object ball off another into a pocket. A combination shot or combo is where you hit one object ball into another to pocket the second ball. If two balls are touching, they are said to be frozen. If the line of centers head straight to a pocket, the combo is said to be wired. When you hit the cue ball to the left or right of center, you impart side spin to the ball. Americans sometimes call this English. Left spin causes the cue ball to rebound to the left off a cushion. And right spin causes the cue ball to rebound to the right off a cushion. When the spin is in the natural direction the cue ball is heading into a cushion, it is called running spin, since it helps the cue ball maintain its speed. When the spin is in the opposite direction, it is called reverse or check or hold up spin. Side spin is also given special names based on the side of the cue ball you hit relative to the shot direction. Here, the right spin is called inside spin, since the q-tip is on the same side of the cue ball as the object ball cut direction. The spin is also running, and this shot is called an inside follow shot with top right spin. Here, the left spin is called outside spin, since the q-tip is on the opposite side of the cue ball as the object ball cut direction. This spin is also called running, and this shot is called an outside draw shot with bottom left spin. Anytime you hit the cue ball off-center, the cue ball doesn't go straight. It squirts offline in the opposite direction. Solid maple cues like this produce a lot of squirt, which is sometimes called cue ball deflection. A low squirt or a low deflection or LD shaft, like this carbon fiber Predator Revo, produces less squirt. When you hit the cue ball off-center, the cue ball also swerves on the way to the object ball. Swerve is greater with more cue elevation, and it occurs sooner with slower speed. The combined effect of squirt and swerve is called net cue ball deflection. 
With a slow speed shot like this, the swerve occurs very quickly, resulting in very little net cue ball deflection. To aim accurately when using side spin, you must be able to adjust for squirt and swerve, and the required adjustments vary with shot speed, shot distance, cue elevation, and cloth conditions. Here, I am using my system for aiming with side spin to get an accurate hit. Saws uses combinations of backhand English, where you shift your backhand, and fronthand English, where you shift your fronthand, to adjust your aim relative to center ball alignment for a given shot speed and distance. Notice how far off I need to aim, even with an LD shaft, to get a square hit on the 13. See the Saws link in the video description for more information and help. Sometimes, we also need to adjust our aim for throw, which is caused by friction between the balls. Here, with no spin or with left spin, the object ball gets thrown to the right slightly. And with a lot of right spin here, the object ball gets thrown a lot to the left. With just the right amount of spin, called gearing outside English, there is no throw whatsoever. See the throw video links in the video description for lots of information about throw and how to adjust your aim to compensate. A bank shot is where you bounce an object ball off a cushion into a pocket. There are diamond systems that help you aim bank shots. Here, I am using the popular 2 to 1 rolling ball system, aiming along the 4 to 2 line. Demonstrations and details for all common diamond systems can be found at the link in the video description. A kick shot is where you bounce the cue ball off a cushion to hit an object ball, in this case to pocket the 8. The 2 to 1 system works for these also. Top bankers usually use either slow speed to ensure a rolling ball or fast speed to ensure a sliding ball. In both cases, the results are very predictable, although they do require different aims. Here, I am using my one third more than twice system. Again, details and demos are available at the link. There are also many mirror systems that are useful to aim bank and kick shots. Here's an example. These systems don't require numbers or even diamonds. They are completely visual. Again, see the link for more information. Bank shots are given different names in different situations. This is called a straight back bank. This is a cross side bank. This is called a cross corner bank. And this is called a crossover bank, with the object ball clearing the cue ball before the cue ball can rebound and interfere. If the object ball were to hit the rebounding cue ball, it would be called a double kiss. Now let's look at a few break strategy options. Here's a standard 8 ball power break with the cue ball just off center. The main goal is to get a square hit, trying to pocket one or both of the second row balls, and to attempt to leave the cue ball near the center of the table for the best chance for a shot after the break. Sometimes the balls don't cooperate, and you can leave your opponent with an easy run out. And other times, things go mostly as planned. An alternative 8-ball break is the second ball break, where you hit the second row ball first, attempting to pocket the opposite corner ball and send the cue ball straight across the table back into the rack area. I got a little unlucky to not have an easier starting shot, but I have a shot at the 4. With a good spread like this, any good player is a favorite to get out. For a lot more information about 8-ball break strategy and technique advice, along with how to play the game effectively, see the video encyclopedia of 8-ball linked in the video description. In 9-ball, there are many break strategy options depending on the rules under which you play. The main goal of a 9-ball break is to pocket the near wing ball in the corner and get a look at the one after the break. With a good rack, this can be accomplished with a soft break. Any good player is going to run out from here. With a really soft break, you can get a very easy early win like this. Here, the 3-9 combo wins the game. 
Luckily, there are newer braking rules that prevent this sort of thing, thanks to Corey Duell, who pioneered many creative brake strategy innovations. For example, you're not allowed to pattern rack by placing certain balls in the same locations rack after rack. For example, the 2 and 3 in these positions allowing for the soft brake cheat that makes a mockery of the game. A three balls rule is often also used to prevent a soft break, where you need to pocket or drive at least three balls above the head string. In that case, you need to use more of a power break. But with a good rack, you can still pocket the wing ball and get a good look at the one for a good chance to run out. For much more information about nine ball racking and breaking strategy under all rule variations, and for advice and techniques that will help you play the game more effectively, see the video encyclopedia of 9-ball and 10-ball linked in the video description. Sometimes it is good game strategy to be defensive instead of offensive, especially when you don't have a shot or a good chance to run out by playing a safety. Here, I can easily snooker my opponent and break out my only problem balls, greatly improving my chances to win the game. That was a smart safety play. I am a heavy favorite to win this game with my opponent in jail behind the proverbial eight ball, needing to kick off multiple rails to get a hit. That was a very good effort as a safety escape by my opponent, but with ball in hand, I now have an easy run out for the win. Sometimes you can play a two-way shot with a safety. If I make the bank, I can continue shooting. But even if I had missed this shot, my opponent would still be in a tough spot. But since I made the ball, I can get an easy win. The jump shot is an important weapon in modern pool. Sometimes an overhand dart stroke is a good choice. Most people feel more comfortable with and are more accurate with a standard underhand stroke. Normally, you want the cue as level as possible to limit unintentional swerve, but when necessary, cue elevation can be used to purposely swerve the cue ball around an obstacle, in this case the 6, shooting at the 8. And with a lot more cue elevation, you can execute a large curve masse shot. I hope this quick overview of the game was helpful. And I hope you now better understand some terms and phrases you may have heard in the past. I want to thank Bob Jewett for giving me the idea to do this video. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.